Deuteronomy 31. We're getting down to the end of this book. We're also getting down to the end of Moses' life, end of his ministry. You know the story of Moses, how he was raised in Egypt, raised in the household of Pharaoh, raised to be a king in Egypt. He was well-learned, well-educated, but Moses chose to suffer the affliction of God's people to live rather than live in all the riches and all that Egypt had to offer. And you know that Moses slew an Egyptian over his Jewish heritage. So Moses was banned, took off, and was in exile in the backside of Midian for 40 years. First 40 years, he lives as a king. Next 40 years, he lives as a pauper. Even though he tried to run from his problems... Even though he chose to live a base life as a shepherd for his father-in-law, the Lord had other plans. You see, when Moses was born, there was a decree to slaughter all the children of Egypt. But Moses was spared because his mother put him in a little basket and he was caught in the bulrushes. And one of the daughters of Egypt took him in, raised her as one of his, hers. God had a plan for Moses. Even though Moses had ran, God knew right where he was. And at the right time, the Lord called to Moses from a burning bush that was not consumed. He couldn't get away from that. And God called him to go and be the mouthpiece of God and to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses spends the last 40 years of his life being a real shepherd, an under-shepherd, for, from, for the Lord, for the children of Israel. Led them through the wilderness. Led them through thick and thin. Saw the mighty hand of God. My dear friends, if you want to see the blueprint for the local church, you've got to see the church of the wilderness. And in all of Moses' uh, accomplishments and all of that, he did disobey God at one point. It cost him. The children of Israel are about ready to cross over Jordan into Canaan land, receive the promise of God. But Moses is not going to be permitted to go. And in the last few chapters of Deuteronomy, Moses has given final instruction to the children of Israel. He's already inst installed Joshua. Joshua is going to be the next leader. And he's given them some final things. Now, I just want to look at one verse in chapter 31 and what a verse it is. I mean, if it's something to leave them with, Moses is going to leave them with something that's really something. Look what he says in verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go before thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do appreciate your goodness. Appreciate the good singing tonight. Appreciate the good testimonies. Appreciate folks that you put in our lives and you put in our church that are real Christians. Folks that love you supremely. Folks that have learned to die to self. Lord, thank you for our church. Thank you, Lord, for the preachers you've blessed us with, for the teachers you've blessed us with, for the laborers you've blessed us with, for the folks that have talent that you've blessed us with, for the young people you've blessed us with. God, thank you for folks with gray hair that have stood the test of time and they're an example to the young people. Thank you for the young couples and the middle-aged couples. Lord, you've just been good to our church. And Lord, we bless you. Lord, I'm thankful this church has been a place where folks that have problems or folks that have been hurt or folks that have faced adversity, they can come here and find a refuge. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Thank you, Lord, for the open doors of ministry. Lord, whether it be the jail or whether it be the Caribbean, Lord, others, ministries you've blessed us with. 
Father, we thank you that the gospel's going forth, that people are being saved and people are being helped. Thank you for all the missionaries you bless us to support. And God, thank you for the work they're doing around the world. But Lord, thank you for the personal ministry that people are doing. Lord, giving out a track at a restaurant. Or Lord, inviting a co-laborer or co-worker to come to church. Or Lord, uh, uh, those that are involved in praying for others. What a ministry, the ministry of prayer. Lord, you've just been so good to us. And we bless your holy name. Lord, we're excited and looking forward to the days ahead and all that you're going to do. Father, we know that you know better than us. Lord, the need that we have for more space so we can have more ministry. And God, we're trusting you to open those doors. And God, we're trusting you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Lord, again, we're excited, looking forward to the days ahead. Now, Father, I pray for Miss Lynn. I pray you touch her and help her. I pray for Miss Crystal. I pray you'd increase her immune system and you would help her. Lord, I pray as well for Peggy Pittman. I pray that you would touch that lady that has leukemia. Help her. I pray for Miss Marcy that is sick. Others that may be sick tonight, that you would help them. Those that are providentially hindered, you would help them. Lord, I pray for Crescent Springs Baptist Church. Lord, I pray that, God, your will would be done. Lord, I hate that they've had to sell their building. And, Lord, I don't know what the future holds for them, but, God, you do. And I pray your will would be done. Father, I pray for Brother Bob. I pray that the results come back from the biopsy and everything's okay. And I pray you'd touch him. Others, Lord, that need a touch tonight, I pray your hand would be upon them. And God, you'd strengthen them. Now, Lord, you know, Lord, I, I certainly want to give you my best. And, Lord, I'm not uh, physically at my best, but I'm always reminded what the Apostle Paul said. He said, when he was weak, then was he strong. So, Lord, in my frailty tonight, I pray that the voice of God would be heard and people would be strengthened. Now, Father, just bless your folks. Touch them abundantly. God, do great things for them and through them for the cause of Christ. And Father, we'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads and thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, bless tonight. Lord, maybe somebody tonight needs to be edified. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody just needs a word from the Lord. I pray tonight they'd get some help. And Lord, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice three things about this verse. I want you to notice that Moses instructs them first of all to be brave. Look what he says. Be strong and of good courage. Can I say that bravery is not brought out in a person till they have to face some adversity. It's easy to walk around and say, well, if this happens, this is what I'm going to do. But you really don't know till you face it. And can I say most of the time, it's not pre-planned. And most of the time, it's over before you realize you was brave. But Moses is instructing them to be strong and of a good courage. Can I say there's a lot of things we can't be, but we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, and we can be of good courage. Can I say that you ought to be encouraged tonight that you're saved? You ought to be encouraged tonight that the Lord walks with you. You ought to be encouraged tonight that He's coming back for us. You ought to be encouraged tonight that this is as close to hell as you're ever going to get. Uh, and this may be the end of the end. Uh, and we step off of this old world into glory and be with the Lord forevermore. You ought to be encouraged tonight. You ought to be of courage, huh? Now listen. Anybody can sit down on the Lord. Anybody can kick out on the Lord. But what a blessing for those that just choose to be strong and of a good courage. He says, be brave. Be brave. Now, I know the election kind of went our way. 
but Trump's not our Savior. And I'm really encouraged that he's stirring it up. That blesses me real good. But hey, that's not the answer. The answer is the Lord. And regardless of who's in the White House, we still are facing a wicked world. We need to be brave and be of good courage. I know who's in the White House, but I also know who's sitting in Frankfurt. Uh, you need to be brave. You need to be of good courage. You need to be strong. We don't know what a day brings forth. So he encourages them to be brave, but he also encourages them to be bold. Look what he says. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Who's he talking about? He's talking about the inhabitants of the land they're about ready to take. Now keep in mind, they've been in the wilderness 40 years. Israel's not made up of soldiers. Israel's not made up of even good farmers. Israel's made up of a ragtag bunch that uh, are the offspring of a crowd that was brought out of Egypt that didn't believe God. Their fathers saw great miracles, the parting of the Red Sea, uh, uh, the bitter waters of Mar made and sweet. Uh, uh, their fathers, though, murmured and complained. Uh, and when God sent in spies into the land, they came back. Uh, uh, two of the ten had a good report. They chose not to believe the good report. Uh, they chose to believe the negative report. Can I say tonight, uh, most Christians uh, uh, side on the, uh, uh, err on the side of the negative more than the positive. Uh, uh, we want to uh, believe all the dirt rather than believe the good in people. Uh, and can I say tonight, uh, 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 you're getting ready to face some things. You better learn to be bold. Uh, he said you're getting ready to go into the land of the Hittites, the Amorites, the uh, Jebusites, and all them otherites. Uh, and by the way, some of them are giants in the land yes, sir. he said be not afraid don't fear them hmm? some of you may have to face some giants greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world be bold some of you men in here tonight some of you husbands some of you fathers some of you grandfathers one verse that just all the time falls in my mind. Quit you like men. Stand up and be a man. Some of you are afraid of your own shadow. What does Moses say? Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Be strong and of a good courage. Be brave and be bold. I'm going to give you a little pet peeve of mine. Hope this doesn't make you mad. But if it does, you need to learn to get glad. Well, Brother Doug, I don't want to do anything to offend anybody. Suck it up, buttercup. If you live by that Bible, you're going to offend people. If you believe that Bible, you're going to offend people. Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace but a sword. If you stand on the word of God, you're going to offend people. You're going to offend uh, uh, wicked people. You're going to offend uh, religious people. You're going to offend your neighbors. You're going to offend your co-workers. Uh, but let me help you with something. You live by that book, you're going to offend Christians. Because a lot of people don't live by this book. Mm. So don't fear them. Don't be afraid of them. You need to fear the Lord. You need to do what's right in his eyes. You need to be bold. The Lord never called any of us to be a welcome man. He never called any of us to be sissies. Uh, he never called any of us to wear uh, skinny jeans. Uh, he called us to be men. Uh, uh, stand up and be accounted for for righteousness sake uh, and learn to be bold. Uh, that don't mean you have to be offensive. That don't mean you have to deliberately uh, have a chip on your shoulder uh, and act like you're better than somebody else. Uh, God never told us to do that. Mm, but you ought not be ashamed of Christ. You ought not be ashamed of his church. You ought to reach down inside and let the 
inward man where Paul said work out your own salvation let him come to the forefront and take over and overcome your inabilities Moses says you need to be brave he said you need to be bold and then I thought about this he said be brave be bold because I say what do you mean because well, look what he said be strong and of good courage Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Why? Because for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Can I say this? I don't know a whole lot. But I've learned this over the years. Uh, The Lord goes with me. I've learned over the years he goes uh, on ahead of me up there. uh, And can I say uh, he's never left me nor forsake me. Uh, There have been times that I have faced adversity. Uh, There's been times I've been stabbed in the back. Uh, There's been times uh, that it felt like all hell came against me. Uh, There's been times when folks have stood with me. uh, And there's been times that I've looked around and couldn't find anybody. Uh, But I can stand here tonight uh, and boldly proclaim uh, the Lord has never failed me uh, nor has he ever forsook me. Uh, There's never been a time I've ever had to make a stand uh, that he wasn't standing right there uh, that he didn't strengthen me uh, he didn't give me the courage uh, he didn't give me the boldness uh, uh, the Lord is great uh, and greatly to be praised uh, and I'm telling you tonight uh, you can be brave uh, and you can be bold uh, because the Lord is faithful hallelujah Amen. Amen. so be brave be bold because the Lord is our God. I'm interested. And I was reading over this while I was in St. Lucia. And I'm reminded it's been said of several times from behind the pulpit that that phrase he will not fail thee nor forsake thee means the same frontwards or backwards it also means thee forsake nor thee fail not will he because he won't coming and going you can depend on the Lord but as I was reading this it says for the Lord thy God he it is that doth go with thee I got to think about that word with God. Now we know that He's not going to fail us. Amen. We also know that our flesh is subject to fail. In the energy of our flesh, we will fail. The best our flesh can do is fail. Amen. For without Him, we can do nothing. But through him and with him, there's nothing we can't do. So I got to thinking all about that, and I just want to give you a little thought on with God. With God, all things are possible. Hmm? The world don't understand with God. The lost don't understand with God. The doctors don't understand with God. The bosses don't understand with God. Can I say, a lot of folks just don't understand with God. Even people sitting in churches. Because they've never exercised their faith. In a moment, this crowd of Israel is going to have to do something they've never done. They're going to cross over Jordan into a land that God has promised them that's not their land, but it will be their land. When they cross, the priest, unlike the Red Sea, where God just pulled it back and they walked across on dry ground, and they've heard about it. Caleb and Joshua experienced it. Well, they're getting ready to cross over Jordan, and it's not going to, it's not going to work that way. As the priests commit their foot to the water, then that water sways. And with each step, it goes a little bit farther back and a little bit farther back. 
And can I say there are a lot of people sitting in churches that won't put their foot to the water because they're afraid they're going to sink. Faith is not looking and see how it's all going to work out. Faith is trusting God to work it out whether or not you understand it or see it. We don't like living that way. Many people have never lived that way. We've never had to depend on God for our meals. We've never had to depend on God for uh, some money in our pockets. We've never had to depend on God for anything because we've already got it all figured out. That's why you have no power with God. I'll never forget back 100 years ago and I was Brother Pittman's I went to church on one Sunday morning Brother Rod and all I had in my pocket was my tithe money I didn't have any other money my parents were gone I was gone on a, on, a, on a trip and it wasn't payday for another week I didn't have anything had my tithe money. And you know what the devil did? The devil said, well, just keep that to help you get through the week, and next week just double up on your tithes when you get paid. Well, that makes a lot of sense to the flesh. But can I say there's no logic in faith? Went to church. I, 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 didn't, I wasn't anybody. I was just a lay preacher in the church. I was just sitting there. When it came time for the offering, I just put my tithe in the plate. And by the way, Colonel, I didn't have enough gas in my vehicle to get back home. But I just did what I was supposed to do. That's all I know to do. It's always right to do right. I didn't put that money in the plate expecting God to do anything for me. I just did what was right. Say, what happened? Service, we had a good service. Brother Pittman preached, had a good service. Service is over. And one of the deacons, he's in heaven now. Brother Bill Ivey come up and said, Brother Doug, me and my wife would like to take you out to lunch if that's okay. I'm thinking, hallelujah, that's real good because I was going to starve all day. <laughs> so they took, there was a country restaurant up the road. We went up there and ate and and ate and ate and, and they paid for my meal and that was a blessing took me back by the church get okay, mine I don't have enough gas in my car to get home he said brother Doug thanks for going out to eat with us by the way here's your little money you might need some gas money today and gave me a little money hugged my neck went on down the road I'm praising the Lord put gas in my car uh, got back to church that night uh, and uh, had gas all week the Lord bless what are you trying to say brother Doug uh, uh, it's always right to do right and sometimes uh, you just got to live by faith uh, sometimes when it doesn't make sense uh, sometimes when you think there is no way uh, uh, Miss Veronica and her family sang that this morning uh, he just makes a way uh, and I just just live by faith and God will honor that uh, reason some of you don't have a story like that is you've never put that into practice with God all things are possible just because you can't figure him out doesn't mean he can't figure it out I didn't tell you that story so the next time you're faced with something you do what uh, is right expecting to have a story like that. You do what's right regardless of any story comes. I got to think about with God. That word with is an important word. That word with means before you. Can I say with God he goes before you. Friend, you don't have to fret about it because he's already been there. Oh yeah, that's good. He's already seen around the next bend. He already knows the next valley. Uh, he already knows the next mountain. Uh, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want. Uh, he leadeth me uh, to lie down in green pastures. Uh, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, you can trust him. Uh, he's done been there. Uh, 
And with God, you can make it. Uh, just let him lead. Uh, just learn to follow. Uh, and you'll find the Lord will never let you down. Uh, I'll never forget after I surrendered to preach. My granddaddy had already had strokes and knew his days were shortened. And he advised me to do this, Brother Adrian. He said, you get on the coattails of a good pastor. You keep your mouth shut. You follow where he takes you. You listen to him. Whatever he says you do, and God will teach you more from that man of God than he'll ever teach you in any other means. And can I say, you just get on the coattails of the Lord. Amen. You just learn to keep your mouth shut. You just learn to follow him. It'll be all right. Amen. I've learned this. You learn to pray for others. You've uh, learned to ask the Lord to bless others and meet the needs of others. Uh, you get so involved uh, in talking to the Lord about others uh, and you watch and see if the Lord uh, doesn't come through and start meeting your needs. Uh, you don't even have to talk to him about your needs. Uh, he knows your needs. Uh, but when he sees you got a burden for others, uh, you watch and see if he don't throw some extra handfuls of purpose your way. Uh, the Lord goes before you with God. He's before us. That word with also means beside you. I'm glad the Lord's beside me. He'll never lead me nor forsake me. Oh, what a friend he is. He sticketh closer than a brother. Where would we be without the Lord being beside us? Where would you be tonight without the Lord being beside you? He's been my helper and he's been your helper. Right. Uh, oh, bless the Lord. Amen. You see, people got this mindset about being small in numbers. You understand you and God's the majority. He didn't need anything to create everything and he certainly doesn't need anything to meet your needs. He still owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, he still is God. Yes. Right. And by the way, it's not him with me, it's me with him. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm just glad he lets me hang around. Huh? I don't deserve anything from God, uh, but I'm sure glad he allows me to walk with him and go through this journey called life. Uh, Oh, can I say that word with also means he's behind you. I'm glad he goes before me, but I'm glad he's got my back. Amen, Pastor. I've studied that whole armor of God. He has protection for our head, protection for our chest and our, our torso protection for our legs and even our feet gives us a weapon in one hand and a shield in the other yes, sir. but there's nothing for the back right. you know why because he's got our back oh. I think one of brother Thad's greatest favorite messages to date and I don't even have the outline anymore putting on the front while stabbing in the back That was one of Thad's favorite messages because it had a lot of blood and guts and he likes that gladiator stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you got to like blood and guts if you're a Cardinal fan. But anyway, because them birds are getting plucked and stomped all over the place. Anyway. So I rub salt in the wound. What is that? Three losses in the last second by next to nothing. And now you know what it's like to be a Bengals fan. <laughs> Can I say the Lord's behind us? Amen. Uh, we think of him quenching all the fiery darts. You know, we think about that shield of faith taking on. How many darts has the Lord quenched from behind us we didn't even know was coming? That's good. I'm glad he's behind us. I'm glad he's before us. I'm glad he's beside us. That word with also means beneath us you know as a child of God you may fail the grace of God and you may fall but you'll never fall farther than his arms I believe as Isaiah said that he bears us up with his mighty arms you'll never fall 
any farther than he can catch you. I'm glad he's beneath us. Huh? Ella's getting to that rough house stage. You can see her right now tearing up a pew. Uh, she likes it when you throw her up, but she's trusting you to catch her. I'm glad the Lord never, ever hurls us out somewhere that he's not right there to catch us. Any of you that's ever heard me preach on those eagles and the Lord stirring up the nest, one of those things those mama eagles do to them eaglets, they got to get them out of the nest. Uh, and they'll take them out and they'll put them on their back and they'll soar to great heights and then turn and let that eaglet fall. That eaglet begins to squall and that eagle begins to freak out and fear. And just about the time that eagle thinks there's no hope, Mama Eagle swir- swings up underneath them and bears them back up. Mama's teaching them how to fly. Mama's teaching them to throw them wings out there for themselves and learn how to soar. Can I say the Lord never thrust us out in ministry? The Lord never thrust us out to witness. The Lord never thrust us uh, out of our comfort zone uh, to let us fall. Uh, He's always right there to catch us. He's always right there to support us. Uh, Our problem is we've learned to land in that comfort zone and stay there. You say, preacher, why does the Lord allow bad things to happen to good people? Well, first of all, he's the Lord. He can do whatever he wants. We've been bought with a price. We're his, not ours. And the Lord never does anything in our lives that he does just to do it. He does it to bring glory to him. And sometimes it might be because somebody's watching us. Sometimes it might be because we've gotten too comfortable in our comfort zone. And he's trying to get us out of it. Sometimes uh, people might have sin in their life. And that's usually not the case. But sometimes that's the case. uh, And God brings judgment. Uh, But most of the time, it's just to prove our faith. Been tried by a fiery trial. That our faith will stand. But never lose hope, friend, because the Lord's always right there beneath us. I thought about this. That word with also means beyond us. The Lord goes far beyond anything we can think or ask. He's far greater than anything we know. The Lord will never ask us to do anything that he hasn't already provided the means for us to do it. Now they're getting ready to go in and slay some giants. They don't know anything about giants slaying, but you go read They slay a lot of giants. They're about ready to subdue walled cities. They don't know anything about subduing walled cities, but all they learned was to trust God, and God causes the walls to fall down. Oh, they got to do some ridiculous things like march around the walls and shout, blow trumpets. But when they were obedient, God did things beyond their thinking. Just like when we're obedient, God does things beyond our thinking. I told this in my Sunday school class, and I, I really, I, Brother Greg Neal and I was sitting down there talking, and I was, I was just telling, I said, I don't know how I got to the Caribbean. Who am I? I don't even know how Greg Neal's a friend of mine. Who am I? I don't know how all these great men of God that I've got to know and got to become friends with, how they're my friends. I don't understand all of that. Who am I? I'm just a vessel that learned a long time ago to trust God and to go where he leads. And he's went beyond me and done some things. (coughs) Friend, he's no respecter of persons. He'll do some things in your life. If you learn to become obedient, just learn to mind the Lord. Brother Adrian and I got a text. We're in June. Another island wants to have a conference. (coughs) Wants him to come teach. Wants us to come preach. I haven't even looked at my date book and looked to see if it works. But how's all that happen? Absolutely, Brother Tony. God. 
Amen. <clears throat> you know, every time I go, every time he goes, every time any of our preachers go to preach somewhere, you know, our church gets credit for that. Because we're just ministers of this local church. At any time that we go, the Lord is blessing our church as a result. Because the Lord goes beyond 7183 Old Pleasant Valley Way. I've told you, you don't, you don't really grasp this. The lights never go out and the doors never close on the ministry of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Somewhere in the world, God is doing a work because of the way you've given to missions, the way you pray for folks. Our church is known throughout the world. It's hard to believe. I end up in meetings all the time and people come up and they say, boy, I've heard about you and your church. How'd they hear about me? Huh? <clears throat> How'd they hear about us? Because of the testimony of this church. Amen. How many have heard the statement that Mockery is the greatest flattery. When people want to be like you and they start acting like you and they start doing things like you, that's the greatest compliment. That means they see something in you, they want to be like that. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Miss Christina, did or did not your brother-in-law tell you he was in a camp meeting in Arizona here recently? And heard a preacher get up and preach my towel message. Yes, sir. On the reservation. On the reservation. Now, how in the world did my towel message get to Arizona? <laughs> and how in the world did they preach that towel message? Because I was there when God gave it to me. Every one of them illustrations are true. I was there. But somebody's heard that message. And it touched somebody's heart. And some preacher said, I'm going to go preach that booger. <laughs> J.D. Walker heard it in Tennessee and went, got, went and preached it in Virginia. I said, Brother J.D., how'd you preach those illustrations? He said, Brother, it ran, it ran, brother. <laughs> Can I say this? It's not my message. The Lord gave me that message. I can tell you where I was on the altar when he gave it to me. When he said, don't worry about it, I got this. What I'm trying to say is if the Lord can use any arrow he's given me to black at the eye of Satan somewhere down the road, I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. But he, the Lord with us, means he goes beyond us. Be a great day when you get over yourself because the Lord got over you a long time ago. Right. But all those definitions are the definitions of that word with in the Old Testament. There's one other definition of that word with, and it's only found in the New Testament. Can I say, it still means in the New Testament the Lord's before you, He's beside you, He's behind you, He's beneath you, He's beyond you. But in the New Testament it adds another flair. It simply means the Lord in you. And when the Lord is with you, that means He is really with you. He is with you every step of the way. Because He took, chose to dwell in you and I. Where we go, He goes. What we read, He reads. What we see, He sees. What we hear, He hears. It ought to humble us to know the Lord is with us. That ought to compel us to make sure that we make certain we're always doing right. Well, if not, we get right. Because the Lord is in us. Moses looks at him and said, Be strong. And of a good courage. Fear not. Nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God. He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. Friend, I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what mountaintop or what valley may be coming your way. 
But if you've got the Lord, you've got it all. Quit looking at the valleys. Quit looking at the obstacles. Quit looking at the trials. Quit looking at all that stuff. And learn to look at him. Because he's right there. Hmm? You get enamored with him. Nothing else matters. You take your eyes off him, just like Peter, you'll start sinking. But if you got your eyes on him, you're liable to walk on the water. I've seen where he skips on the hills. You might do a little hill skipping too if you're walking with him. Take Deuteronomy 31 6, underscore it. Go back to it often. It'll help you face things you didn't think you could face. Maybe tonight you need to come thank him that he's with you. Maybe tonight you need to come pray for somebody. Maybe tonight you just need to come tell him you love him. Maybe tonight the Lord will put somebody on your heart and you just need to go to him and say, I want to thank you. Or maybe you need to go to somebody and say, Lord, just put you on my heart. I just want you to know I'm praying for you. I don't know. But I know Deuteronomy 31, 6, it'll help us every step of the way. Let's all stand. Miss Tina, if you come to piano, Brother Clint, if you come. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the promises in the scriptures. Lord, when you gave Moses those words and when he penned them down, he had no idea of the generations that verse would help. He had no idea how many times it would be quoted that the Lord will not forsake thee, he'll not leave thee. But Lord, you did. Thank you, Lord, that with God we can do all things. Now help your people tonight. Somebody here tonight needs to be encouraged. Somebody here tonight needs some strength. Somebody here tonight needs to not be afraid. Somebody here tonight needs to learn to trust the Lord God. Bless now, speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen.